Hi everyone, it's Dr. Crad here, and today I wanted to share a case with you that demonstrates two useful tips that may help your patients undergoing cataract surgery. I'll be speeding through the irrelevant portions of the case. First tip is that your second instrument is really handy at protecting the corneal endothelium from chattering nuclear fragments. As you can see, this is a relatively dense cataract, and after cracking the nucleus into multiple pieces, one would start removal of the nuclear quadrants. Use your second instrument to physically guard the corneal endothelium in the event you experience some lens chatter. These pieces are dense and having them float around freely in the anterior chamber is not ideal. The nuclear fragments that are still in the capsular bag will hold the posterior capsule back. So you don't need your second instrument to guard the posterior capsule. And don't be shy to reinflate the anterior chamber with viscoelastic. After I remove the first two quadrants, I'm going to reinflate the anterior chamber before resuming phacoemulsification. emulsification. Chatter can occur unexpectedly, and so here I'm removing the third quadrant and still protecting the corneal endothelium, knowing that the fourth piece will stay and hold the posterior capsule back. The posterior capsule is at higher risk while removing the last quadrant, but as you see in this case, you can hold a portion of the last quadrant back against the posterior capsule, knowing that if the quadrant comes forward and slips forward, your second instrument will be there to hold the posterior capsule. This technique is very useful to protect the cornea in dense cataract removal. Cortex removal is uneventful, so I'm just gonna speed through this. And the second tip in this video will be how to ensure the most effective posterior capsule polishing. This is especially important when performing cataract surgery with advanced technology lenses, such as the light adjustable lens or presbyopia correcting lenses. As you can see, I'm using the polymer IA tip to polish the capsule directly. I'm trying to remove all the lens epithelial cells. I'm trying to leave this capsule as clear as possible. As long as the capsular bag is not super flimsy and you have adequate zonular support, you can gently polish the capsule directly using a polymer tip or a silicone tip. And despite polishing directly, you'll see there's this stubborn area right around like nine o'clock. There's like this patch of fibrotic epithelial cells that do not want to come off. Unsuccessful at removing that patch, I polish as usual the posterior aspect of the anterior capsule, and then I grab my 3cc syringe with BSS, flushing the posterior capsule, seeing that if I power wash this area, will those wisps of epithelial cells come off. As you saw, I polished it directly with the IA tip quite aggressively, and it wouldn't come off. And so now I'm trying a flushing technique to see if I'm more successful. First, I'll flush from the main incision, seeing if power washing at this angle removes those wisps. And if that doesn't work, then I'll go through the paracentesis, power wash from a different angle to try to loosen them up. And if you're wondering why I'm going through so much trouble to try to polish this posterior capsule as much as possible, it's because this patient is getting a light adjustable lens and I want that posterior capsule clear and not interfering with post-op refractions. It seemed to really loosen up after going through the paracentesis. And so now I'm gonna go back through the main incision and that large wisp is gonna fly right off. The gentle persistence paid off. Now one may argue that going to this extent, polishing the posterior capsule is unnecessary. But especially when doing advanced technology lenses, like the light adjustable lens, when I want a good and reliable refraction in the early post-op period, or if I'm doing a presbyopia correcting lens, if the vision is not very clear, I don't want to have to perform a YAG capsulotomy only to find out that the patient didn't like the lens technology. And don't get me wrong, YAG capsulotomies are sometimes still necessary, but this technique minimizes them. I now routinely flush every posterior capsule with three cc's of BSS, and I've noticed that my posterior capsules are cleaner than before. Here I'm sweeping the anterior capsule with the Singer Sweep polisher, and now I will be injecting the light adjustable lens into the capsular bag. 
Now, there are cases, of course, where the posterior capsule is so opacified, the only things that will clear it up are a posterior capsule orexis or a yak capsulotomy. But those are fortunately more rare. And I think just using this non-invasive technique of polishing will eliminate the need for plenty of yak capsulotomies. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.